So hi everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, welcome to you wherever you are um, around the world and thanks a lot for taking the time to join us where we're going to give you a first look at um, a new solution coming from Avid called Avid Stream IO. Okay, so uh, let's take a look now at uh, Avid Stream IO. Um, so this is Avid Stream IO. This is the, the GUI, and then it's showing me four channels. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the configuration and some of the views that you can have um, in a little while. Uh, one thing to mention is that it runs on a web GUI. So this is running on Google Chrome uh, on my machine um, here, uh, and it's given me access to it. We're going to focus most of our time on what's called the remote console. This is the tab that, uh, that we're looking at um, at the moment. And and that's the tab that most you know, operators would use um, if they're wanting to do recordings uh, and using the remote console to do that. Uh, you can, of course, control um, uh, Avid Stream IO using uh, Media Central Acquire uh, or Media Central Capture for ingest um, or Media Central Command uh, for playout. Um, so let's just have a quick look at some of the other tabs that are here because there are other things that you can do um, in um, Avid Stream IO. So for example, in the video engine tab that we have here, you can see here that this is where we can set some of the parameters that we have for some of the channels. And you can see here I've got two out uh, channels, I've got two in channels. Uh, coming in. Um, and both of these, you know, you can have um, dirty output if you want to have that, and the same for um, what you have uh, coming in as well. So you have some options around the, the kind of things that you can do, and you can configure that on the video end in, engine page. You also then have the commander page, and some of you might be looking at this if you're familiar with uh, our fast serve uh, line of products, that it's the same uh, UI. So it's continuity there uh, if perhaps you're coming from fast serve uh, and moving to um, Avid Stream IO uh, in, the, in the future. So again, on the Commander tab, some more things you can configure here um, around things like send to playback, audio mapping, for example. You can, of course, have watch folder uh, workflows. So again, there's a watch folder tab here. There's also some other ones around, you know, telemetry. You can check the uh, the uh, the system and how it's performing as well. But let's focus on the remote console and what we're looking at here. So as I mentioned, two channels in, two channels out. In a four channel box, you can have any configuration of these four channels. So you could have four in, no out, one in, three out, two in, two out, as we've got here. You can configure that exactly as you want uh, to, to have it. In the display here, I'm obviously looking at the four channels along the top, and then below it, I then see the inventory. So this is you know, the content um, of uh, recordings that have been done or items that have been sent to playback, potentially to be played out uh, using um, Avid Stream IO. There are some other view options. I'll just quickly look at them. So you see here at the top right-hand side, we're looking at what's classed as the normal view. There is then a compact view, so you can still see the video, but um, it's it reduced in size. There is then also the small view, and then there is this other view with columns, and that then shows me you know, all the channels here on the left-hand side, and then the inventory at the right-hand side. So you can choose you know, which of these different views uh, that, of course, you use. Now, I also want to point out here, and again, if you've used perhaps Media Central Stream before, you might be familiar with this, where we have the concept of ingest templates and routing templates. And really what this is about is, you know, as an administrator, you can go in, you can set these templates up. So as a user, when you come in to use them, it's very simple and straightforward because a lot of these parameters are already defined. And all you need to do is choose the right template that you actually want to use. Um, so that's really what these are for. I'll just quickly bring up an ingest template to show you. And so you can have a, a default template as we have here, or you can actually go in and create more templates. Um, and these templates then offer more flexibility around you know, the different kind of workflows that you can see. But it is things like a preset based around you know, perhaps the codec that you're going to be using, the layout, the audio that you want to use as well. Um, also the storage that perhaps you're going to be ingesting into. Um, and also things like if you're working in a Media Central production environment, uh, perhaps the folder where you know clips are going to be ingested into as well. So that's really what the you know the uh, ingest templates editor um, is is all about. Now on the individual channels, if you have a quick look at them, if I come up here to the a uh, little ellipsis, uh, we have on-screen display settings. So you'll see when I do a recording that some of these displays will display, and you can choose which of the ones uh, are that you actually want to have coming up um, on the channels um, as, you're, as you're working. 
So let's go ahead now and do a recording. So a couple of different things that I can do. One is I can just do a crash recording. So I could just click on this button, do a crash recording, um, and the, the system would go into record. Or I can choose this button here for new recording, and that then lets me choose which template it is that I want to use. Now you'll see here that in this template, we have basic and we have advanced settings. And that's because um, you get more options depending on what the workflow is you actually want to do. So I'm going to go ahead here and choose this OP1A and OP Atom uh, template that we have. Again, one of the great flexible uh, uh, abilities of uh, Avid Stream.io um, is the fact that you can do OP1A and you can do OP Atom in Jest. You can actually do that simultaneously uh, if you wanted to, to do that to different locations. So here we have a default duration, which is an hour. I'm just going to go in and do a five minute recording uh, for us here, but you have hours, minutes, and seconds. Um, I can go in and give it a, a file name. So the file name we're going to have on this one is the countryside GVs. So here I can also name the file. Now you see as I'm highlighting the file name here, at the right hand side, I can use a bunch of defaults. So I could use, you know, dollar $t for date and time, for example, or $d for date, dollar $t for time. So you can use these as part of your configuration. But uh, I'm just going to go in here and uh, name this clip. Well, uh, once I'm happy with that, you know, I could have auxiliary media. I could do proxy media here as well. I can also copy media to other locations. But let me just go ahead now and go into record. So what you'll see is channel goes into record and then in the inventory I, I can also see that the recording has started as well now I mentioned about the on-screen displays earlier on if I hover my mouse over here now you'll now see that you know here we have you know time of day time code it shows me the codec that I'm recording in the format the audio format we're using and we also have some clocks counting down uh, counting up and also the total duration uh, that we have um, in here. Now, there are also options. If I go back to the ellipsis now that we're doing a recording, I could, of course, modify this recording. So, for example, I could go in and I could change the duration, you know, while the recording um, is, is ongoing. Um, in the um, inventory here, you'll also see that we now get a bar which represents the time span um, of the recording with a progress bar, you know, showing me how far the recording is. And, of course, the recording is in red, so I can easily see uh, this is a recording that's uh, that's also ongoing just now as well. Now let's suggest a workflow where perhaps I'm doing it in jest and I also want to play this out um, at the at the same time. Then to play out the clips, all I need to do is simply drag it from here and drag it into the playout channel. And that's now going to queue on the first frame. Now, the reason that it's queuing on the first frame is because that's a behavior that is set uh, on the channel itself. So if I go to playout settings, you see here it's set to still on, to go to a still on first frame. You could set to play immediately. Uh, you also get this option of queue and play next as well. So you do have these options. Uh, but from here, all I'm going to do now is just click on the play button. Um, and of course, the clip is now starting to play. So I'm ingesting on one channel and I'm playing out um, on another. So this is a workflow that you, of course, you might want to deploy, but you may want to have something playing on other channels, of course. So it's very simple and, and straightforward to do. So I'm just going to grab this recording and drag this up. Now, you've also got some options around whether or not you want clips to loop, for example. So let me just click this one off to play. Um, so you do have some settings where, for example, here, you know, this clip, this clip is going to loop 100 times. Um, you can, of course, break that loop. So it would only play once. Um, you can also control when you drag and drop whether or not you just want it to play once as well. So that, again, is just part of some of the configuration um, on the system itself. I can, of course, you know, pause um, any um, playout um, uh, that's, that's ongoing. And of course, I can resume uh, sort of playback uh, with that as well. Uh, of course, here, I also have the option to eject recordings as well. So I can reject um, uh, from the playout port. So here we have two channels playing um, out. We have one channel in record and one channel that I'm just seeing a preview um, of a, a feed uh, that's actually coming in. Now, if I wanted to look at any of these channels, perhaps in a little bit more detail, we looked at some of these configuration options that we have here. And we also get this option here where I can actually 
um, maximize the view that I have of this particular channel. Um, but you'll see the other channels now are up here at the top left-hand side. If you hover your mouse over them, you still get a nice little preview. It can show you what's actually going on. And you can see here the board are showing, this is the one that's in record. You know, this is one that's uh, that's playing out. Uh, and if I wanted to, you know, to go to um, uh, any of these channels, you just click on it and that then loads in the single uh, monitor view that we have here. The same for the ingest channel. You just click on it and it comes up um, here as well. Now, if I go back to uh, the way that we were looking at things before with the four channels, you'll also see here that I can minimize channels. So here I can minimize the channel and it goes here at the top right hand side. Again, just click on it and it comes back. So there's quite a lot of options that you have here. Now, one really important thing to mention, of course, is while my workflow here using um, Avid Stream IO, um, downstream from here, if I'm working in my Media Central production management um, system, perhaps I'm an editor using Media Composer, uh, or I'm a journalist using Media Central Cloud UX, um, I'm really not impacted by this at all. My workflow remains exactly the same and the same on the play outside um, as well. And that's one of the key things that this is a non-disruptive way um, of introducing new technology um, into your Media Central production system. Also important to recognize that you don't need to have a Media Central production management system because, of course, Avid Stream IO can also ingest um, OP. Uh, 1A files, as well as OP Atom files, could be ideal for workflows, perhaps with um, uh, Avid storage, non-Avid storage, and also perhaps Adobe Premiere Pro editors as well. So there's lots of uh, workflow capabilities. Now, you can see in my playout channel here that this is continuing to count down. We're coming towards the end of the, you know, the five minutes of the uh, recording. And you'll see once we get to that point that the recording, of course, is just going to stop. But of course, my playout channel is still playing out because the recording, um, you know, we haven't finished out, uh, finished off playing out the five minutes of the recording. So you can see here now that we're counting down towards the end. We're still counting up um, as well. Um, but we're able to ingest and play out, of course, all at the same time. So really, that's just a, a quick look at some of the capabilities um, of Avid uh, Stream IO. Uh, in this configuration, four channels, two in, two out. But again, as I mentioned, you can have it configured in any particular way that you have. I've shown you the manual playout method of selecting clips and putting them into the playout channel or selecting clips and putting them into record. Really important to recognize that Media Central Acquire and Media Central Capture for ingest and Media Central Command for playout. And also we have you know, VDCP uh, controls and also um, uh, OSIP, for example, which is our API uh, for, for third-party controls as well. So you can control um, Avid Stream IO using you know, these other kinds of technologies as well. Um,